Hi, I'm Ryan Stevenson, and I was a concept artist on Viva Piñata. The game you see today wasn't the intended direction at all. Originally called My Garden for the Pocket PC, the animals had a simple cartoony style. But we needed a look that unified all the creatures of the world together, a style that implied a collection. I think some of my influences for Piñata came from what I was playing and watching at the time. Animal Crossing, Cubeval, Doshin the Giant and Watership Down, but that was only the first step. I like to immerse myself completely into the subject and find my reference by source. I didn't want this project to be a recreation of someone else's interpretation. At the time I was fascinated by Mexican culture, researching into festivals such as Day of the Dead and cultural things like luchadors. I instantly loved the treatment of vibrant colours and patterns, and I remembered being in a Mexican restaurant in New York seeing a piñata hanging from a ceiling. That's how it all kind of slotted in together, and the piñata is in our game before. We created a rule set for the piñata. They don't have any muscles or bones. We wanted players to feel like they could crack them open. They had to feel like magical objects that had sprung to life. The first animals we focused on were things that you could find in a small hobby, creatures that we already had a relationship with. From there, we grew into something that felt more like a larger ecosystem. Every piñata was important, even something as small as an insect. Players could simply find their own favourites. A lot of work went into finding the quintessential animal form. For example, the dog went through many variations before we settled on its final design. I went with the terrier breed because I wanted him to look fun and these dogs are packed with so much energy and personality it seemed like a perfect match. Some of the designs I'm most proud of are the Hootie Fruity, Fudge Hog and Paina, but the Rash breed is my absolute favourite. I like its simple patterning and his animation was a lot of fun. I actually made him into a real piñata and he's still knocking around the studio today. A little faded, but still well loved. For Trouble in Paradise, we had to create even more animals. Chris Phillips joined the team and it was great to see someone take the piñata rule set and create something new. Just like fan art, it's always fun to see someone's take on the world. Pests were a new breed of piñata. With a little extra work from the player, they could be tamed and eventually would live in your garden. Again, we took the important elements from animals and streamlined their designs. The inspiration for the pest patterns were taken from tribal tattoos. This gave them a defining look when next to regular piñatas. The world in which all these creatures lived was given just as much care. It's all about attention to detail and the level of decoration. Even the dirt and grass has patterning. I wanted it to look handmade. Every mark you see has been placed individually. We wanted the player to feel as though there was more to this world, that it lived and breathed, that it existed. Having the garden help us makes the world feel inhabited. Even all the villagers have backstories to make this place feel rich. For example, the post lady wanted to be a fashion designer, and that's why she adapted her own outfit. I loved working on Piñata. It was a fun game made by a great team. We were left to squirrel away and come up with ideas that we still feel proud of today. Thank you.